In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. But I call to God, and the Lord will save me. Evening and morning, and at noon, I utter my complaints in home, and he hears my voice. He redeems my soul in safety from the battle that I wage, for many are arrayed against me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, Comfort and direct us, gracious Lord.
with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson for the sixth week of Easter is from the Acts of the Apostles, the 16th chapter. A vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there, urging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that God had told us to preach the gospel to them. So setting sail from Troas, we made a direct voyage to Samothrace, and the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia, and a Roman colony. We, reminded, we remained in this city some days, and on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to the riverside, where we were supposed to, there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had come together. Now one who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Theratia, a settler, a seller of purple goods. She was a worshiper of God, and the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. And after she was baptized, and her household as well, she urged us, saying, You have judged me to be faithful to the Lord. Come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to Christ is risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands, and he has put all things under his feet. The epistle is from the Revelation of John, chapter 21. <laughs> Then came one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues, and spoke to me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, its Radiance like a most rare jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels. And on the gates the names of the twelve tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south, three gates, and on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Each of the gates had a single pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, Transparent as glass. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. 
And the city has no need of sun or moon or to shine on it. For the glory of God gives its light, and its lamp is the lamp. By its light will the nations walk, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it, and its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. They will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. John, the fifth chapter. <laughs> After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate a pool in Aramaic called Bethesda, which is five roofed colonnades. In these lay a multitude of invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel of the Lord went down at certain seasons into the pool and stirred the water. Whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was healed of whatever disease he had. One man was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be healed? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I am going, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Get up, take up your bed, and walk. And at once the man was healed and took up his bed and walked. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The text for our meditation this morning, today's Gospel from John 5. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As you know, Jesus often spoke in parables. But it could be said that his entire life and ministry were parabolic in the sense that nothing was merely what it seemed. There was always a deeper meaning to the things he did and said. From his birth in a lowly stable, signifying his affinity with the common man, to his innocent death that satisfied the wrath of his father, thus making all who believe in him co-heirs of heaven. Nothing about him was confined to its base value. As an infant, he looked no different than any tradesman's son, yet he was the savior of all mankind. In his death, he was indistinguishable in his appearance from the criminals hanging beside him. But his death was no ordinary passage from this world into the next. It was the fulfillment of the most ancient of all prophecies, God in the flesh, the seed of the woman, repairing what Adam, in yielding to temptation, had destroyed. Isaiah wrote of him, He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. And yet, what he did, no one else could ever do. Nothing about Jesus was merely what it seemed. So it is with the event recorded by St. John in our Gospel today. Those looking on may have been impressed with the miraculous healing. Some, in contrast, were irritated by the timing of it, occurring as it did on a Sabbath. Some may have missed it altogether. But in any case, what we have here is no mere miracle story. So what lies behind the miracle at the pool? Let's take a look. First of all, the setting for the event is one of the many festivals celebrated by the Jews. The particular festival is not mentioned, probably because it's not important. There was a festival in Jerusalem, and Jesus went. And while he was there, this thing happened. However, what was the point of these festivals? Was it not to remember God's work of redemption in the past, and to express their hope and prayer that he would continue to bless them with his presence and favor? So to mention the context of a feast is a hint that in the healing that follows, Jesus is doing the same thing his father had done in the past and thereby demonstrates that he himself is this very same God of Israel in the flesh. Now, a word before I move on regarding verse 4 in the second half of verse 3. You may notice in your modern Bible that these verses are left out and relegated to a footnote. Dr. Weinrich indicates that based on some of the oldest manuscripts, they are likely a, a later addition. But the church fathers of no insignificance, such as Tertullian, Ambrose, and Chrysostom, attest to them and as so many of us were raised on the King James Bible, which includes them, I have included them in our reading. Let us continue by recalling the purpose for Jesus' appearance among us. Was it not to deal with the problem of sin? The first prophecy regarding the sending of Messiah, the Anointed One, the Christ, was a response to the problem of sin. 
mankind's relationship with the Creator had been severed through the sinful actions of Adam and Eve. And ever since, we are conceived and born in sin. The image of God has been obliterated and we are therefore broken. So, the word Jesus uses in addressing the paralyzed man in our text means not just to be healed, but to be made whole. Jesus was not simply addressing the man's paralysis. He was addressing the brokenness of his entire nature. Do you want to be made whole? Jesus asked him. This manner of speaking is similar to how he spoke to the paralyzed man let down through the roof in Luke 5. Man, your sins are forgiven you. Healing the man's paralysis was not of first importance to Jesus. The first thing he did was to cure him of his sin. Before sin entered the world, there was no paralysis. There was no illness or disease of any kind. Such things are the result of sin and never existed prior to Adam's fall. Death never existed before Adam's fall into sin. That's the issue Jesus primarily came to address. But he also addressed the logical results of that redeeming also the broken and diseased bodies of those suffering in a world corrupted by sin. He did so, of course, because of his compassion for hurting sinners. But he also did so to draw people's attention to his greater work of redeeming not just our bodies, but our spirits and souls as well from the crushing consequences of sin. So Jesus was not merely asking the man at the pool if he wanted to be healed of his paralysis. He was asking him if he wanted to be resurrected. The parabolic nature of this text has been seen at least from the time of St. Augustine who lived over 1,600 years ago. Now, Some of what I'm about to say is going to bend your mind a little. So I encourage you to stay with me. Let's look at some of the things Augustine observed in our gospel for today. First of all, the multitude of invalids lies among the five roofed colonnades of the pool of Bethesda. These Augustine understood to represent the five books of Moses. The pool of water he saw as the Jewish people who are shut in by the five books of Moses. Why interpret it this way? Think of it like this. Moses was the lawgiver. In the five books of Moses, we have the law of God laid out before us. The Jews thought they could be saved by observing these laws, but this is impossible. Peter pointed out to the Jerusalem council that neither they nor their fathers had been able to bear the burden of the law. Any confirmand can tell you what the law does. It shows us our sin. The law could only bring forth sick people. It could not heal them. But the law convicts. It does not absolve. The hymn writer Paul Sparatus captured this in his great hymn, Salvation Unto Us Has Come. What God did in his law demand, and none to him could render, caused wrath and woe on every hand for man, the vile offender. Our flesh does not, has not those pure desires the spirit of the law requires, and lost is our condition. To be convinced that keeping the law can save you is to be captured, shut in by a false, misleading dream. Chromatius of Aquileia, a theologian of the 5th century, believed that the angel represents Christ, who came to the Jews and by his miracles and teaching agitated the water, the people, by his presence, 
and stirred them up in preparation for his passion. The miracle in our text sparked yet another Sabbath controversy between Jesus and the Jews. The ongoing nature of this controversy seems to indicate that he was stirring the pools, so to speak, so that he might shake them out of their fantasy of self-salvation through the law. Here are some more observations from Chromatius. To go down into the agitated water, he equates with humble faith in the Lord's suffering and death. The 38 years during which the paralyzed man suffered, he saw as representing the 38 years between God's condemnation of those Israelites who refused to enter the promised land and when the children of Israel finally began to enter it. This was a judgment on their sin of rejecting his promise. The paralytic then is representative of the new Israel, which has awaited Messiah and now receives a new exodus leading to the promised land of heaven. What about the sheep gate? I love this. The sheep gate was the gate through which the animals intended for the sacrifice in the temple were brought into the city. What would it have meant then when Jesus told these New Testament Jews that he was the door of the sheep through whom all who would enter the kingdom of God and be saved must pass? In the beginning of his gospel, John declares that Jesus the enfleshed word of God, was vitally involved in the creation of the universe. In fact, John says that nothing was made without him. The language he uses in this account continues that thought. Remember, the multitude of invalids was gathered around this pool for the purpose of being healed and made whole. For the man in this text, it's not actually the pool that does the healing. It's Jesus, the healer sent from above. To become whole in the language of John is nothing other than to be created anew. And to be created anew is to be born from above. And to be made a disciple of Jesus. Jesus' command to the paralyzed man to rise and walk was not, therefore, simply a call for him to stand on his feet and walk around. To hear Jesus say, rise, take up your bed and walk, is to hear Jesus say, become whole through the removal of your sin. What was the immediate effect of his command? The man immediately got up, picked up his bed, and walked. This reveals the creative power of Christ who speaks and what he speaks comes to be. This is the language of creation. Finally, beloved, how can we hear this account of people descending into the water and being made whole without thinking of holy baptism? Isn't this precisely what happens to us in baptism? We are literally recreated by the word of Christ. The Bethesda pool is in every way an image of baptism. The power of God operating through his angel moved the water of that pool. The power of God operating through his Holy Spirit brings baptismal water to life, thus creating new life and granting it to those being baptized. The miracle at the pool of Bethesda provides a rich insight into the multi-layered life and ministry of Christ. We would all benefit from reading his word always with an eye to what's happening behind the scenes, beneath the surface, in his myriad acts of love and service to us. Let us endeavor to do so by God's grace and favor.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please be seated, as at this time the offering plate will be brought forward. And if you haven't done so already, please sign the fellowship registers there in your pew. And if there's a particular prayer request you'd like to remind us of, please use one of these colorful cards in front of you, and the elder on duty will come by in just a few moments to gather those. Thank you. Please stand. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, our Heavenly Father, you never refuse the cries of your children. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we ask for your help and protection for the good of our families, our neighbors and rulers, our brothers and sisters in Christ, our pastors and our overseers. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you have founded your church as a place of prayer beside the waters of holy baptism. Give your holy people hearts to hear your gospel message lips to offer their prayers in faith, and readiness to give of themselves for your sake. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. (laughs) Heavenly Father, keep your holy church undefiled from all that is detestable or false. Embolden pastors to guard her gates and to welcome those who draw near in faith. Bring the rulers of this world into your church to glorify her according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, give wisdom to our leaders in government that they may lead with integrity and according to your perfect will. Protect police officers, emergency personnel, disaster relief workers, 
and the, and the members of our armed forces as they serve in our defense and for the well-being of all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, you hear our prayers for the sake of your dear Son, Jesus. In his name we cast our burdens upon you, especially those of Bud Shergi, Betsy Meverden, David Cotter, Lisa Olson, Marty Schramfer, Cindy Deesh, Ray Schrader, Laverne Worth, Jill Thomas, Michael Burns, Carla Watson, Peter Keller, Lorna Forbes, Dorothy Wirth, Karen Lambert, Liz Sweeney, Shannon Braun, Ronald Virchow Sr., Joyce Virchow, Pastor Ronald Meyer, Joan Reinke, Michael Hastings, Merle Weber, Jeff Dion, Donna Meese, Kathy Rigotti, Diane Olson, Frank Erdman, Shirley Fleischer, Dan Shale, Lana Gast, Sandy Romer, Scott Steenport, Norb Pomerenke, Judy Krause, Lynn Olson, Dominic Hall, and all whom we now remember in our hearts. We also lift up to you the family of Rose Gozlowski, who passed into your eternal presence this week. <laughs> Sustain your children in the midst of terror and trial and hear us as we cry out on this remembrance of your son's resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Bless, O oh Lord, those celebrating special events this week, including those with birthdays, Pat Bielefeld, Erica Sickles, Ambrose Sickles, Claire Bellman, Ed Garrett, Maddie Sturwald, and Joan Reinke, and those with wedding anniversaries, Randy and Luann Bradley, and Dave and Debbie Bartlemy. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious Lord, grant your aid and support to Amy Fermella and the Lutheran Bible translators in Sierra Leone as they labor to put your word into the hands of the people. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious Father, we pray for the people of Gaylord, Michigan. You know their concern. You also know the solution. We pray that you would grant them peace and comfort through Jesus Christ, your Son. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all concord, it is your gracious will that your children on earth live together in harmony and peace. Defeat the plans of all those who would stir up violence and strife. Destroy the weapons of those who delight in war and bloodshed. And according to your will, end all conflicts in the world, especially that which is occurring in Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, give repentance and faith to all who receive our Lord's body and blood today that in the unity of a true confession, they may receive it for the forgiveness of their sins. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying he has destroyed death, and by his rising again he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive Renew and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take Eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
please stand. The true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the one true faith to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Thanks unto you, Almighty God, that you've refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us to the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated. We have a number of announcements to be made. So Pastor Drew has a little one to, to tell you about. I have some exciting news for you. We have a full teaching staff for next school year. <laughs> Miss Emily Aylert has accepted the call to serve as our K-4 teacher beginning next year. And we give thanks and praise to God for that. As she takes and returns home to the valley and home to the school that she graduated. So we give thanks to God for that. Amen. This Friday is the last day of classes. And at 9 a.m. is our closing service, an award ceremony with dismissal at noon. And next Saturday at 10 a.m. will be the graduation for our graduates. So we invite you to both of those activities. And finally, it's that time of the year again. The time for Vacation Bible School, we are once again this year teaming up with uh, Peace and Nina for Vacation Bible School, which will take place the 6th through the 10th of June. That is a Monday through Friday from 9 until 11.45 on Friday. Again, there will be a picnic uh, luncheon time in which we can all gather together and rejoice in the gifts that God has given us. To register for that, the information is on the back page of the bulletin, and look forward to having many of the students and children of our congregation participating in that, as well as if any of you would like to help with uh, crafts or snacks or uh, with leading any of the groups or whatever, uh, please talk to myself or look at the information in the bulletin. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a, a couple of uh, other bits. Uh, there will be no Wednesday service here this week. We're going to be meeting down at Trinity in Oshkosh for the circuit-wide Ascension service. I will get to be the, the preacher that evening, so I hope to see many of you there. And also the next Brat Friday. The, the, the dates for that again? 10th and 11th of June. That's what I thought. Very good. I should have trusted my own memory. The 10th and 11th of June. Now, the, the last one was so, success, so successful, you ran out of food by what, noon? Yeah. Okay, so you better load up this time. <laughs> and to help them do that, there's a sign-up sheet in the narthex if you'd like to, to sign up to, to help during the event or if you can donate 
uh, food items for that, that, that would be a blessing as well. So please see the sign-up sheet in the narthex. I believe that's all the announcements I had. Did I forget anything? Okay, very good. Let us stand for our closing hymn. God's blessings on your week.